Welcome back to OCD Hi-Fi Guy for another installment of The Funnest Thing on Earth. Sitting here and listening to other people's audio systems. <laughs> well, hey, you know, someone's got to do it. I get to be the squirrel jumping all around, changing things for you, so you don't have to do it. Uh, so let's see. So what we're going to do today, we're featuring the cat uh, preamp. I think I, I showed you this the other day. It's back over here. I didn't have a clean spot for it on the, ra on the rack. I have to make some longer interconnects. But this is the SL1 preamp, which is a vacuum tube preamp. And um, I'm checking it out for a, a, a client of mine, and uh, uh, it is the idea behind it is right now Cat makes preamps still to this day. They're like twenty thousand bucks. They're super um, celebrated and very good, um, but the uh, uh, it's still the same basic fundamental circuit, and you can get something that's like twenty twenty five years old, such as the one we just saw, and it's going to sound ninety percent. Uh, like the orig like the ones now that are you know twenty and thirty grand, or so they say. So let's find out. So far, what we've noticed is that um, there is a nice uh, extension and base. It's almost like a fuller, uh, deeper base that is very nice. Um, and this is as opposed to direct from the Vermeer two, which is the uh, you know the DAC that we've been using. So now we're going from the Vermeer two instead of going direct straight to that crossover, we're going Vermeer two over to you can't see it; it's on top of that thing under there, to the preamp, and then down from the preamp to the crossover, and then out to the Roland monos, and then of course to the Magna pans, the Franken pans that I got. Whoops, going on here. Uh, so, um, we're going to play a piece now and, uh, what I want to do is we're going to check the difference between standard tubes. The tubes that are in there now are electroharmonics. They're like, you know, made in Russia, current production tubes, 12 AXs or AUs. I can't remember which. Uh, and then I've got some killer RCAs. Let's see. I'll show you real quick over here. One of my fun little boxes of toys, uh, in here and, and inside is I've got all a bunch of NOS tubes. These are, you know, really cool um, RC. This is an RCA from, and then look, the guy that I get them from, he's got them. They're, they're certified. Tube Museum New York, great place to find tubes. He's, he, you pay a premium for them, but this guy is OCD as I am um, about his vacuum tubes. So they're kind of, um, it's a premium, but you're going to get a really good product. So these tell you the transconduction. It's the whole thing. He's got it all measured out. Um, what does it say? Um, NOS 1950. Is that 60? Can you see that? Let's see. 1950. RCA 12 AU7. So I've got the AUs pulled out over here that we're going to throw in. Um, this is Valvo. Uh, I believe this is Switzerland. Um, what does it say? 1967. Um, I've got some of these little guys that are... Um, what are these? Uh, Ico 12. Oh, those are AXs. So maybe not those. Uh, anyways, and those, you can't even see. Those are probably the Russian ones. 6N1Ps, I can see right there. Uh, Mullard. Okay, so it's like, uh, and then these are RCAs, the old RCAs. Um, so we'll put these in, and then, and, and then listen to the difference because, boy, it's incredible. Sometimes you put those old vacuum tubes in, and it is like... A freaking, uh, it's unbelievable the difference they make. So first we're going to listen to this piece uh, and we'll listen to it with what's in the SL1 and then we'll change them out. And we'll listen to a couple more. So here we go.
Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute and 30 seconds of that song. Very interesting stuff. I, I love anything like that. That's so cool to me. It just sounds like ancient stuff, man. I mean, it's from the desert. These are Berbers from, you know, North Africa um, and uh, incredible stuff. So um, that's a piece there. Well, um, it kind of interesting. It really has some subtle nuance with the vocal. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to unplug now the, some of these, uh, the, the preamp tubes. I'll tell you which ones I'm putting in, I don't know yet, but when, when we come back, I'll, I'll let you know which ones I put in, which ones I took out. Okay. Okay, so here we have it. This is actually the diagram of the inside of the, amp, of the preamp. And right over here is the, the line stage. Over here is the phono stage. We're not using phono, so we don't really need to worry about that section. Here's where we're going to concentrate. So we've got the, the left uh, low noise. Uh, let's see, this uh, 12AX. No, okay, right here's the left low noise section here's the left high gain left and right high gain section and then this is the cathode follower so what i did was i just changed this cathode follower what was in there is this uh let's see it was a um it's a it's a sovtech let's see if i can see under the light better yeah it's a 6922 it's a sovtech i don't know if you can see that on there or not there you go barely okay so Sovtech 6922, it's like a current production, Sovtech 6922. What I switched it out with is um, a Siemens, uh, and look, I got it from Uncle Kevy at Upscale, and this is uh, a um, 7308, is that what it is? A 70, uh, 7308, yeah, so it's a 7308, um, and does it give me a date on this? Uh 7308 it shows the transconductance well i would guess by the looks of the box it's uh 80s i would say that's 1980s um just by the looks of that box so um okay so let's listen and see if we can hear difference what i would listen for is like more detail like hearing more little things um so let's just listen here we go Okay, if you couldn't hear that, get better speakers for your computer or get better headphones or whatever, because that's obvious. I mean, right off the cuff, the little things, before they're even playing the music, you can hear the their hands on the instruments, their, you know, little clicks and things and clunks and they're, whatever. They're, they're moving around, getting ready to start. You can hear that beforehand. I don't even know. Then, then you hear the little shaker. The guy's shaking on, on the left side. Well, you can't, I don't know if you can tell the sides, but there's that shaker in the background that I didn't, I don't even think I heard it on the first, with the first tube. Like we just went from something that to me with that first tube, I was wondering, I don't know if this music is going to be good enough for us to show the differences in new, new old stock tubes and, 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 and current, but I think it's perfect for it because it sounded like there was nothing with the first tube. And now there is music where there was not before with those little stringed instruments. The things is just, it's basically in the very beginning. It's so easy to hear. So, okay. So next step we're going to do is I will go over to 
the um, low noise uh, section, and we'll, we're going to replace both the right and the left, uh, and I'll tell you what comes out and what's going in. Okay. Okay, so next we took out the uh, the 12 AXs, or the AUs, in the um, low noise stage. We pulled out, which I can't stand it when the, this is what happens sometimes. You buy them, these things off eBay or whatever. Um, to, they don't look like they're matched to them. Let me see. Yeah, they're not the same brand anyways. Um, but this is, uh, they're 12 AUs. This is, uh, what does it say, uh, made in Germany. Okay, so maybe that's, a, maybe that's, that should be all right. Who knows what that is? Um, and then, let's see if they look identical. I can't, let me get my light out here and see. Whoops. Let's set this down. Well, let me see. I'm going to set this down for a second and check these out. Okay, so I checked again. I mean, they do look identical, actually. So maybe the ink just came off, but who knows what they are. They're unknown. And what we put in was we put in some 1950 RCAs. Um, and we're going to see how that this sounds now. So let's uh, let's take a listen. See what we got. Okay. Go back. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I don't know that that to me, I it's, it's a trip. It, it 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 like I heard his voice didn't sound as good. Actually, I heard the crackles in his voice and stuff. It was like more real realistic. It's a trip. It's almost like when you have the high definition TV and you can see the pock marks in people's face and stuff. And at first, it's really cool because it's high def, and then you're like, oh, but it's revealing too much. You know, the ugly. I wouldn't say that about the music, okay? It's not revealing anything ugly, but it is going into a really deep layer of, of, of re revealing. It's revealing at an exceptional layer as composed to the others. I would say the other, the last one we heard was a little more pretty almost and a little more smooth and pretty, and this is getting more real. It sounds, the guy sounds like he's across the room more, uh, and I can hear the little cracks in his voice and stuff, and so um, very interesting. That's with the 1950 RCAs. So now we're going to change the high, uh, the high gain section or the 12 AXs, and um, I'll let you know what we changed there. Okay, so the next ones we did were in this uh, in the the line stage output, the high the high gain these two, and we pulled out some current, you know, electro harmonics here, and we changed them out with some 1967 valvo from holland uh these things are close to bugle boy from what i believe 1967 holland we should hear something pretty good i would imagine off this these are again from the tube museum new york um great uh great purveyor of tubes uh oh yeah we gotta turn that up there don't we okay, almost almost sat here and scratched my head wondering why things weren't going on Okay, so no explosion, no good. Okay, so let's listen. 
Anyways, the guy up in Tube Museum, his name's Mark. So if you talk to Mark in Tube Museum, New York, and you're looking for tubes, tell him OCD freak boy told you about him. And then he'll pretend he doesn't sell tubes. Uh, <laughs> okay, so here we go. Check out Valvo 67, 1967. Okay, so there you have it. That was the Valvo of Holland. What what I heard there was, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it sounded like we got the fine detail back, a little more fine detail on the top. It, so it brought a little more, pre a little more. I don't know what you'd say, just just more detail on top, something that brought it forward, and uh, uh, rhythm in a weird way or something. It was almost like. I got this rhythmness from it. It really felt like a nice pace, a nice rhythm out of those uh, is what I felt there. It wasn't uh, as extravagant as a change as the first uh, first one was probably the most, you know, that, that, that we heard. Um, so that's interesting. So as one more step in this whole thing, we have over here, voila, it is one of my killer power chords, handmade piece. Um, that is very exotic and extravagant. Um, we are going to put this on the power supply. Here's the power supply for the SL1. What I did on purpose, I just put a regular old molded, you know, thing that it would come with, just this little crappy cord. Um, we're going to go ahead and change that and see if we can even hear anything. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've changed the power cord out for one of Mikey's super dupers. Oh, wait a second. I just lost, um, hang on. Okay, so we're back and here we go. This difference is now super duper power cord on the preamp power supply.
Okay, so there was minute 30 with the power cord and seemed like um, a little more information retrieval was pretty much how I heard that. And then just the imaging is different, a little bit different. Like this guy sounds like he's emanating out of just dead airspace right in front of me, like right here. It's like if I were to just imagine standing right in front of that rack, it's like an apparition of a human, you know, like a some sort of spirit in here. <laughs> it's freaking me out, man. Um, no, for real. The imaging just got really, really lucid and very three-dimensional, like uh, very much so. So since in, in the vein of we're doing stuff, um, I've got another idea. I've got something else we can try, which is up here's my server, the music server. And um, so just to see how much little things can make a difference, right here is a silver foil dc power cable that i've made and this uh will replace this little chintzy one and it's a power supply from uh, from from my linear power supply over to the server this is the thing that powers the server the cable that we're going to replace is the one for the usb card which is right up there um so i'm going to replace this thing it just powers the usb card that's it and uh so let's see how much changing the dc power cord on the usb card on the music server makes a difference if it does or not i'll be back okay so here we go again with a very small change the dc cable uh on the usb card let's see if we can hear anything Okay, so, you know, once we get this far, and I've done this many changes, it's really, it's it's hard to decipher some of these little things like that, but I'm pretty sure what the, the, the it's it's like, okay, and, and it's like, when I talk to friends, audio, other audiophiles, we get to a point where it's, it's like, it's just more real. It just has something that's more real about it. It's hard to really put your finger on it, but you know, as a whole, it just, just got a little notch more towards real, and that's what happen here and, and it's just kind of like you just hear it in the imaging and uh i also felt like there was a little bit more sustain on there's like this part where there's a dooms, dooms thing like a, a drum thing in the background or something and and it's got a trail after it you know it's got sustain on it and it seemed like the sustain got longer from this little thing i noticed it hanging a little bit more which is a trip um so you know um okay i wasn't going to do this but maybe we will Let's try a fuse in the power supply of the preamp. <laughs> Let's see how minuscule we can take this. Okay, so we're going to try a fuse. Let me go check that size of that thing, see if I've got one. And we'll put in a magic fuse and see what happens. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so put in a fuse now into the power supply of the line stage. And uh, it's a, you know, magic fuse. And let's go ahead and let's see if we hear anything.
Okay, so, uh, again, at this point, I don't know if my mind's playing tricks on me or what, but something seemed to be taken away a little bit, almost. I don't know what. The vocals seem to be more clear, more forward, more, uh, you know, just more there. Um, but the background stuff seemed to get kind of washed a little bit in order to make that vocal come forward. Maybe that's what you lose. Um, but, um, so... That's sort of what I feel from that one. I think I'm going to pull that out and put it back to a, a regular fuse. Um, everything else seemed to be a positive gain. Um, I don't think that one was totally 100%. So I'm going to put it back and then listen and then determine if I'll keep it. But anyways, that concludes our session for today. Well, for at least for this part of the day, um, which is our retube that was tube rolling with the SL1 to see how effective vacuum tubes can be on the small signal tubes which they're very effective is what we found. Um, and you will pay for it. Usually those little tubes might be 12, 18 bucks a piece, 20 bucks. They're going to be 100, 150 a piece uh, if you buy the types that we put in. So let's see if, let's say they're, you know, we're, we put about $500, I guess, worth of tubes in there um, uh, before we were done. And then the power cord's expensive as well. That's a couple thousand. And uh, the little uh, DC power cable, that's, maybe 300 um and is that everything we did i believe so the fuse is 150 bucks um it's that one of those blue things um and um i'm i'm not sold on it really so um i'll put it back to whoops i'll put it back to normal and see what happens but i will give credit where credit is due um uh, and that's it so uh that concludes the uh our session. So uh, thank you all for joining us and I will be back. See you. Okay. And I just remembered something because I know I was going to hear it from my buddies that are into the fuses. You got to flip the thing around. Well, my bad. If it doesn't sound good, you flip it around and then you try it a second time. So I flipped it and now we're going to listen to it this time around and see if that fixed it or if it got better. And we're not getting anything. Hold on. Okay, let's see if it fixed it.
Okay, so that was definitely better, for sure. So, you know, it's weird. Is every time I've ever flipped a fuse around, it's always been the second way. It's weird. It's like I've never plugged it in and then had that be the right way. And then I flip the fuse and then it sounds worse. And then I put it back. I've never had that. Every single time I've ever put a fuse in, you flip it around. I flipped it around and then it sounds better once I flipped it around. So I have no idea why that is, but I find it very strange. Um, anyways, so that concludes it. Synergistic uh, blue fuse. Um, it sounds uh, it sounds good. It's uh, you know I mean the things I think they it's like cleans noise up. It's like an RF filter or something of that nature. Um, to me, the general sort of feeling of uh, almost everything synergistic is that it it focuses things to the center um, and it, and it gives they, they get real um, you know the the vocal and everything comes nice and clean and and it seems to clean up um noise um the byproduct of it though for me is that it's slightly um oh boy i don't know what the word would be for it it's slightly bound a little bit up it's almost like whatever brings it to the center is is like let's pretend like, like there's a huge magnet say in the center and everything comes in towards it but because of that uh, that 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 force it's everything's being held tight. So it doesn't seem like, um, oh, effortless would be the opposite where it's just like loose, effortless. Everything is flowy. Every, this thing seems like tight and like condensed down into one molecular central point that is very focused, but dense, you know, um, and not, and then, and then it's like you take it out and then it, things loosen up and air comes back almost in. So it's like, a, it's, 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 it's interesting. It's, it's, um, but that's sort of what I, I've, I've, I've repeatedly listened to products by Synergistic and, and, uh, and I think they have a signature sound to, to me that I notice between almost everything that they do. Um, and that's what it's about, focusing it all to the center. Um, and then, and then it, den it, 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 it's density gets higher. It's like it, it condenses it as well. Um, so I don't know. Jury's out for me on what I like better. But nonetheless, um, there it is. And we'll see you soon.